In this lesson, we'll be learning about the practical application of the turning effects. So these are the learner's outcome, some prior knowledge. By knowing this uh, particular principle that uh, torque equals to force times perpendicular distance, we can apply this principle to understand the workings of many daily occurrence or tools. For each of the situations that I'm going to introduce later, try to identify the location of the pivot location of the force that you apply and the strength that you apply, the perpendicular distance from the force to the pivot. First one, opening of doors. When you want to push or pull open a door, where will you push or pull on the door? Will it be near the door knob or will it be near the hinge of the door? Okay, I think this is a pretty common sense question that we choose, usually we will choose the door knob. You find that you will use less force when you push near the door knob. Okay? But why? In order for you to push or pull open the door, you need a certain amount of turning effect. So turning effect is def defined by force times perpendicular distance. By pushing or pulling near the door knob, you are actually using a larger distance away from the hinge, which is actually the pivot. So this is actually the pivot and you are using a very large distance when you push. Okay, So you are using a large distance and in order for you to generate a certain torque, you don't need, this time around you don't need uh, that much of a force if you use a large distance. So that's the idea. If you use a large distance, you only need a smaller force to push or pull open the door, which means that it's easier for you to do. Of course, you still can push near, push here instead of this side, but you find that your force needs to be very big because your distance is a very small number. So relate to another similar example, such as simple as flipping open open a book. You find that where will, do you flip over the page? Do you flip? Do you put your finger near the edge, or do you put flip by putting your finger near the center of the book? I think the answer is pretty obvious. Another application, try to pry open a tight uh, biscuit tin. You can use a spoon to help you instead of using your fingers, somewhat like this. So for this case, identify where is the pivot. You find that the pivot is actually over here at the edge. Where is the force that you apply? And the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the force. As shown in the diagram, you find that the turning effect is again the force that you apply multiplied the distance to the pivot. This turning effect when you pull this uh, spoon down will help you to open up the pry open the lid uh, more easily. But why is that so? You find that the distance from the pivot to the lead is actually much smaller. So the distance from the lead to the pivot is actually much smaller. What does that mean? It means that for the same turning effect that is generated by this uh, force, let's say this force 1, this is distance 1, force 1 times distance 1 is actually equivalent to the, uh, the turning effect that is generated by over here. But since the distance uh, for the second one is actually much smaller, this is small, you find that the same turning effect would generate a huge force that's going up. So the same turning effect would generate a much force, a larger force going upwards. And in this case, would help you pry open the biscuit tin more easily. This same as the crowbar. So this is a picture of a small crowbar. You find that in this case now the pivot is over here and you pull it this way. Okay, notice that the distance to the pivot is always perpendicular to the force and from the force to the pivot. So this is this distance this is called the perpendicular distance, it is always perpendicular to the force. Okay, and it is uh, from the force to the pivot. So in this case we apply a force that has a 
large distance. Again, this is a large distance so that we can lift up an item that is placed near the pivot with a large force. So in this case, the force that we want is to go up. And again, the perpendicular distance is perpendicular to the force and to the pivot. So this is the distance you are talking about. Notice again, this distance 2 is smaller than distance 1. So the force 2 is larger than the force 1 that you apply, which is what we want, using a small force to generate a large force 2. Does it surprise you that the scissors also apply this principle? In, if you want to cut an item more easily, where will you place the item on the scissors? In position A, which tip of the scissors, or position B, at the mouth of the scissors. Again, it seems quite intuitive that we always cut scissors, cut items by placing the things okay, at the mouth of the scissors. Okay, but why is that so? Is it because at B, the scissors is sharper? But actually, it is not true because both A and B actually have the same sharpness. But why is it that you, again, you place item uh, near to the pivot? Uh, so that's a clue. Okay, because the position B, the scissors is able to apply a larger force to cut the items and consider the position A. But how? Okay, if we again look for the pivot, in this case, the pivot is right at the center. Okay, the force applied by U is over here and the perpendicular distance from the force to the pivot. So this is the distance one. This is the force that you apply. Okay, and this time round, notice that again, if you place close to the pivot, this is the distance two that we're talking about. And the force two, you find that of course the force, like in previous case, the force two will be much larger than the force one. So another situation is the nutcracker. If you want to crush a nut, of course you cannot use your hand to do it. You use a nutcracker to help you. And the pivot is over here. This is the force that you apply. And the distance from the force to the pivot. Again, 90 degrees. Perpendicular distance. So, but this time around, the nut is placed closer to the pivot as compared to the hand. So in this case, this is the distance a nut to the pivot. And of course, uh, like previous situation, when your hand exert a certain force to close the nutcracker, the nutcracker will actually exert a much larger force on the nut due to a shorter distance to the pivot. So the force of this will be larger. So this actually helps us to crack the nut with less effort. It seems that uh, using longer perpendicular distance in the turning effects is always beneficial as we only need to use a lesser force to do what we want or to use a less force to generate a large force. But there's, however, there's always a price to pay. And in, this, in all the cases that we illustrated, we find that in order to achieve the effects that we want or the large force, we have to apply the small force that we use over a larger distance. Okay, what do I mean? It means that in order for you to pry open, you have to move the entire spoon push down for large distance, okay, for large distance, in order for you to generate a large big force, but you find that this lead is just only able to move a very small distance. So, in other words, in order for you us to use a large force, we have to trade off by moving a longer distance. Okay, so that's all for now. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.